Hello and welcome to a brand new mini series on the channel with Borussia Dortmund obviously in the Bundesliga. Is it the Bundesliga or just Bundesliga? Anyway, it's going to be fun. It's going to be short. It's probably going to be one, two, maybe three seasons long, so nothing major. But basically the plan is to just have fun and do well with Dortmund and kind of try and continue exactly what they've been doing in the last few seasons, which is basically buy really good young players Young players that aren't necessarily respected elsewhere. I'm looking at you, Jaden Sancho. But also young players who are doing really well in slightly obscure leagues. I'm looking at you, Erling Haaland. Basically, what I want to do is I want to use Dortmund's money and Dortmund's ability and the fact that they should do really well in the league without me needing to do too much and basically just buy a bunch of youngsters and see how well we get on. So here we are then, we have been hired as the Borussia Dortmund manager, getting paid £78,000 a week with a three-year deal. That's how long we're going to be here for then. We are going to be at Dortmund until that deal expires. I will not sign a new deal. That is how we're going to play this. That's the plan. So obviously Dortmund are very good. They're not necessarily the best team in Germany, but they are certainly almost the best team. Media prediction of second place. Last season finished second place as well. I assume, I don't know a lot about German football, but I assume that is behind um, Bayern Munich. I assume that's what it's going to be. The expected starting 11, or the best starting 11, Berkey in goal, Zagadou, Akanji and Hummels as the back three, with Guerrero and Piszczek on the fullback positions. Omre Shan and Witzel in the middle with Sancho, Roos, and Haaland. I mean, there's definitely some things that we can do with this squad. I'm probably not going to be playing that formation. I'm probably going to go with four at the back. I don't like playing three central defenders, although I did do it quite a lot in Football Manager last season, but I don't really like doing it too much at the moment. Times may change. We might go with this if we have three really good centre-backs. Oh, and this club culture is uh, certainly quite lengthy. Attacking football, develop young players, sign young players, play entertaining football, sign players from domestic rivals... Okay, that's a that's a new one. Sign players under 23 for the first team. That's basically part of the plan. Don't sign old players. Sign German players. Okay, they don't. Do they sign a lot of German players? I get the impression they don't. And then within the three seasons that we are at the club, first season they want us to qualify for the Champions League through the league, which is fine. Get to the quarterfinal as well. They also want us to get to the final of the DFB Pokal, which I believe is like the German FA Cup, and then obviously improve our youth academy. And they want us to win the Bundesliga in our second season. And then the third season. And then by that point, we're going to be gone. Now, normally what I do for episode one of saves like this is I like to get a match played. I like to get just one match played. Obviously, there's going to be some transfer business, things like that going on. So having a quick look at the schedule, we have Hoffenheim. That is our opening game of the season. So that is probably going to be the only match of this episode. Obviously, before then, we've got to do some transfer business, things like that. Financially, we've got about 10 million to spend. That is good. And if we have a look at our squad, I guess we've got some expensive options in there. Erling Haaland, as we know, is very, very good. He doesn't have his minimum fee release. I don't know whether this comes in later on, but at the moment, he doesn't have a minimum fee release. I want to keep Haaland. Haaling? Haaland. I want to keep Erling Haaland, obviously. He's very good. We know this. Everybody knows this. I don't want to lose him. Royce, however, or Rios, I don't even know how you say it. 45 million for a 31-year-old. If we can if we can shift him on, that's a lot of money we can reinvest in basically buying youngsters. You've probably noticed as well that I've got no no place for sentiment and I don't really care if they're good enough. I know Royce is good. I know Hummels is good. Obviously, Hummels is probably going to stay around, but I'm going to try and build a young squad that can win things. So we've got players who are getting on a bit. Witzel's another one. He's 31 years old. If we can shift them on and get a fair bit of cash for them, we can reinvest that money in some youngsters, and that's basically going to be the plan for the save. So tactically, this is kind of the shape that I'm thinking. It's kind of... There's only, what, probably about five different formations that people play for the most part. But this is kind of what I'm expecting to be playing with the one striker. Obviously, that's going to be Erling Haaland. We don't really have too much depth behind Haaland. We've got a lot of very good attacking midfielders and wingers in the shape of people like Sancho, uh, Royce. We've also got uh, Gio Reyna as well, I think, is a very good attacking midfielder. Thorgan Hazard is also here. So we've got very good options playing in those positions. Central midfield... Jude Bellingham is a youngster, obviously. Thomas Delaney, I don't think he's particularly young anymore. He's still 28. 
Still fairly young, so we've got good options in midfield. Fullbacks and defence. I don't know a lot about the fullbacks and defence. I know, obviously, we have uh, Dan Axel Zagadu is good, or he has potential anyway. He's only 21 years old. He's not bad, is he? Mats Hummels is one of those players that he's been getting on a bit, but he's still very good. Rafael Guerrera, he's not bad. 26, okay, I thought he was older than that. So yeah, there's, uh, this is basically what we're going to play. I'm not set in stone. This is probably going to change. We might have a couple of other sort of different alternate formations as well. Basically, I just want to dominate the German League. That's the plan. And you, wait, you cut to like three episodes time when we're like sat seventh from getting sacked. So what I'm going to do now then is I am going to do a bunch of whole sort of pre-season transfers and all that sort of jazz, sorting out tactics, who I'm going to sell, sign, training. I'm not going to do training. I'm just going to ask the assistant to do a lot of that. But yeah, I'm going to do a lot of the pre-season stuff, play all of the pre-season games as well. And probably the FC Duran game as well in the DFB Pokal first round as well. So we'll come back for the Hoffenheim game. But obviously before then... We're going to have to have a look at the squad because it's going to probably be in a slightly different shape to what it is right now. I'll see you in just a second. It is a completely different day for me, but we are back for the Hoffenheim game. We have done some transfer business, but if I'm perfectly honest, COVID's kind of got in the way. It's hardly inspiring. We bought two players in on permanent deals, which I'm actually quite happy with. One of them wasn't really needed because he was a goalkeeper and we've already got Roman Berkey, but I've basically brought in somebody else who I would like to be the number one goalkeeper. We've also brought in somebody who is the son of a legend. So uh, we're going to have Erling Haaland and another son of a legend playing. Is, is Alfinger Haaland a legend? He's not a legend, is he? Maybe for Man City. So yes, then, looking at the players that we've signed. First up, Zach Steffen, the 25-year-old American goalkeeper we have purchased from Manchester City. He's cost £7 million, but... Because of the way I've structured the deal, I think he's only cost about two and a half up front and then it's about five million or four and a half million later on down the road. I don't think he's awful. He's come in as a backup. He played last season for Fortuna Dusseldorf for part of it, 17 games apparently. I want him to be our number one keeper. I don't think we need to have an amazing goalkeeper. And plus, Stefan's reasonably young, still only 25 years old. He's got plenty of time to develop and we still have Berkey. Our third choice goalkeeper now, who is 33 years old, might be off and going to Real Madrid for £3 million. And for £5 million, we have signed Timothy Weyer. The former Lille, Celtic and PSG man has come in for £5 million. Similar to the Stefan deal, it's structured in a way that we're not really paying much from at the moment. I think it's about £2 million we pay this season, and then £3 million over the next four years or three years, something stupid like that. But Timothy Weyer is the type of player that I want to be bringing in. He's got some potential. He's not the finished article just yet. He's probably not going to get a lot of football playing for Lille, Bringing him into Dortmund and with me in charge might mean that he'll get a bit more football. That's going to be the plan is to try and play the more fringe players, the younger players, people like that. Trying to develop them a bit quicker than they would do normally if they just basically sat in the reserves playing in France and not playing for Man City basically like Zach Steffen. Not that he's a youngster. Now we move into the realms of slightly odd transfers, but there's reasons for them. Ethan Laird has joined on loan for Manchester United until the end of the season. He's going to be a backup right back. I've brought him in because I kind of want to sign him. I want to sign Ethan Laird. We obviously don't have the money at the moment. There's no clauses in the loan deal, things like that. But I want to sign players like Ethan Laird because he's not going to get games at United in the first few seasons. If we can make him half decent... Maybe we can convince him to join in the summer when basically I think we get about £50 million transfer budget. So we might be able to basically sign Ethan Laird in the summer. He'll probably get a fair few games for us. Similarly is Emile Smith-Rowe on loan from Arsenal. He's coming as a regular starter because I did, uh, did it badly. I didn't want him as a regular starter. I, I wanted him as a fringe player, squad player, something like that. But yeah, Emile Smith-Rowe, again, another player that I would quite like to sign, give him some opportunities, basically playing at a very high level for Borussia Dortmund in the Bundesliga. He'll, again, he'll probably get some football. I don't know whether Smith-Rowe is a viable option to purchase, though, because I think he's going to cost a lot of money, basically, in the summer. So we probably can't afford him. And finally, Michael Oberfemi, who was brought in before Timothy Weir. He was brought in to basically be a backup or maybe strike partner to uh, Erling Haaland. Probably Timothy Weir is going to do this role instead. On loan from Southampton, I've assigned squad numbers automatically. He's been given the squad number two for some reason, which I quite like. I don't think his potential ability is that bad. Three-star potential ability, two-star current ability. Again, much like Smith-Rowe and Laird, 
I'd like to sign Michael Oberfemi. I think he'd do a very good job playing in Germany, particularly against the lower downsides. His pace and acceleration should rip some of those defences apart. But yeah, Michael Oberfemi is the final player to join currently. Obviously, we've done a lot of business in the summer, which I didn't really know. Munier came in for free. Uh, other players who are obviously worth noting. Bellingham, we know. Uh, Jamie Bino Gittens. Now, he is a player who fits the mould of what I'm trying to do. Signed from Manchester City for basically nothing. It says undisclosed, but I assume basically nothing. But yeah, basically, that's what I want to do. I want to try and find some players from under 23s, under 18s, who you just know aren't going to make it at that club because they're never going to get the chance and give them a chance playing in Germany. Maybe sign them and even loan them out to other German sides to give them a chance there. And interestingly, because of the transfers we've done, the board and the fans aren't too disappointed. I was expecting them to hate some of those deals. The board absolutely love the fact that we've got Michael Oberfemi. The fans not so much into C. Everyone else is a C, maybe a D for Ethan Laird, which is a bit of a concern. Timothy Weyer, because he's, uh, he's getting paid too much, apparently, for his role at the club. But the fans quite like the fact that we've got Timothy Weyer. You can see as well, we've sold, uh, what's his name, Marcel Schmelzer. He has left. We've also loaned out to Knauf and Matthew Mori to Hanover and Greta Firth. I'm going to be so bad at pronouncing German team names, by the way. I apologise now. We've also played one match, as I mentioned earlier. It was against FC Duren in the DFB Pokal first round, and we hammered them. We hammered them 6-0, Erling Haaland scoring four goals, Sancho and Julian, or is it Julian or Julian? I'm going to call him Julian because I'm English. Julian Brandt also with a goal in the 82nd minute. So yeah, we are through to the next round, which doesn't actually take place until the 22nd of December. Why is there such a big gap? Is that just because of COVID? That might just be because of COVID. So then, Hoffenheim, our opening game of the season. We're away from home to start things off, and I think we are the last match to play of the match week. So currently, we're probably sat mid-table because we haven't kicked a ball yet. Our starting eleven then, Zach Steffen will be our goalkeeper. He will be my number one, whether he likes it or not. Munia, Hummels, Zagadou and Guerrero will be our back form with Witzel and Brandt in the middle. Sancho, Reyna, Royce and Haaland will be our front four. I'm debating whether we kind of play... Obviously, Royce is one of our older players. I did mention earlier on in the episode that I wanted to try and sell him. I tried. He threw his toys out the pram. So did the rest of the team. So we've basically backed down from that. Maybe we don't play Royce. Maybe we play somebody else on that left-hand side. Maybe that's what we do. Emil Smith-Rowe will be on that left-hand side. He's going to obviously be making his debut today. On the bench, we do have Ethan Laird is there. Timothy Ware is there. Manuel Akanji is also there. I kind of want to play Akanji. I do like Akanji, but he's not particularly great as a defender. He's just quite fast. Thomas Delaney is there. Oberfemi on the bench as well. I'm Mary Shan and Jude Bellingham. We've got a fairly sizable squad at the moment. There's still a few players down here as well that I kind of want to either loan out or maybe shift on. Thorgan Hazard is one of those players as well that I don't know whether I want him. I don't know whether I need him at the club. I don't really need that many left wingers. And that's his role, isn't it? Right then, our first proper team talk that we're going to do. We're going to do the old teapots. Teapot stance, hands on hips, go out there and impress me. Nobody really cared about that. Fair enough then. The opening game of the season looks like it's on TV as well. Hoffenheim playing a 4-3-1-2. Interesting. We are obviously playing a 4-2-3-1. I guess that's what you'd say. I'd, I'd argue that's a 4-5-1. That's what it used to be back in the day. Now it's kind of changed to have those three attacking midfielders as more strikers. There you go. We're currently eighth in the table. Six minutes on the clock and possibly our first chance. Munez throw to Witzel. He's crossed that ball in. It's gone over everybody. Emil Smith-Rowe is going to collect it. Lovely little back flick from Smith-Rowe to Guerrero. But the fullback's effort goes wide. We have started brightly against Hoffenheim. I can see this save going one of two ways. We are either going to do really, really well or be fired in about March. That's kind of what I'm expecting to happen. Sancho has the ball for us, plays it across. Smith Rowe collects it. The two Englishmen combining on the left hand side. Guerrero's going to cross that in. Haaland is there. And a little dink over the bar from the keeper. No, it just went over the bar anyway from the header. Guerrero with a free kick from the right-hand side. Sancho's at the back post. Kramaric, who I think used to play for Leicester. Did he used to play for Leicester? He's collected the ball and he's running down the right-hand side. Slots the ball through on the ground for De Boer. De Boer versus Stefan. Stefan's positioning is not the best. And we're 1-0 down. Hoffenheim have had one highlight going their way. And they put it in the back of the net. We're going to be sacked in March, aren't we? We're going to be sacked before then. Stefan with the goal kick to Hummels. 
On the right is going to be Munier. He can go forward to Sancho. Yes, he does. Good job. Jaden Sancho, he's going to run across towards the centre circle. Keeps going, plays it on the ground to find Smith Rowe. I love the fact that I'm playing Emil Smith Rowe. I don't know why I'm playing him. I didn't need to do it. Brandt to Guerrero once again. Julian Brandt, Guerrero needs to make a run, does get the ball back, but he didn't do the run though, did he? Guerrero right-footed, right-hand side tries to find Sancho. Is that Steven Sessignon? It's not, is it? Sancho gets it back from Haaland on the right-hand side, he's gone for goal, straight into the hands of Oliver Bauman. Still 1-0 to Hoffenheim. It's actually Ryan Sessignon who's had... We're 2-0 down. Are we 2-0 down? I think he was offside. Ryan Sessignon's playing for Hoffenheim, gets an assist, but it's looking like it is going to be disallowed. It is disallowed. That is good. I mean, I don't really know what's happening here. We are having lots of chances. We've had six chances. Three of them on target. Done absolutely nothing worthwhile, though. On the left is Guerrero once again. He's getting a lot of the ball. Zagadou's pass isn't the best. It was a bit of a hospital ball. But we do have the ball with Smith Rowe. Guerrero once again. Emil needs to get that run down the left. He has to go backwards instead to Brandt. Forward to Reina. Gio Reina. Guerrero, that's his name, tries to find Sancho, doesn't manage it. Dan Axel Zagadou with a bicycle kick to cl clear the ball. Sessignon's going to collect it. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a bicycle kick, was it? That's not what a bicycle kick is at all. Witzel heads forward for us, but Hoffenheim have the ball. We are not looking very good in the middle of the pitch, or defensively, or attacking-wise. It's, it's 2-0, isn't it? It's not 2-0, it's gone wide. Mooney is on a 6-3, now 6-5, so Mooney is having some issues. Gio Reyna collects it from Thomas Munier. He's going to go and get tackled. What is going on here? De Boer down the left. He's just lost out to Hummels. Witzel now all the way back to Zach Steffen. Plays it across Guerrero down this left hand. We are doing a lot of our football down the left, which might be a good sign because Guerrero is clearly doing better than Munier. Witzel, right hand side of Sancho, does eventually use the Englishman back to Thomas Munier. Sancho's continuing his run. He's back to Hummels though. What are we doing? I know we, we are... This is Tiki Taka, isn't it? We're supposed to be... What a poor pass. We're trying Tiki Taka football with long ball passes. De Boer's 1-1 with the keeper again. He's going to make it 2. No, he doesn't. Zach Steffen makes the save. It's going to be a corner. Which we are going to see. Rudy's gone over to towards the front post. Kramerich doesn't get there. Zagadou heads it clear. But back to Rudy, the corner taker. He's managed to find Vult. And why am I trying to pronounce some German names? I don't know what I'm doing. Mooney is having a shocker. He's having an absolute shocker. Guerrero with the corner. Haaland's at the back post. He's hit the bar. And it's into the hands of Oliver Bauman. Half time then. We're 1-0 down against Hoffenheim. And it was that one chance. One chance they had. I mean, go on, give the fans their money's worth. No. Teapot stance. Teapot stance. Show me something else. People seem motivated. We are going to go and do some tactics. Because I don't think the ticky tack is working. We could go for the control possession, which I don't think is a good idea either. Or we just gag and press them. We could just gag and press them, which might be the way to go, you know. Put them under some pressure. Although I haven't set the rolls up for this. No, we can't gag and press. We can't gag and press. I think we maybe drop to this. We go a little bit more defensive. I say, def is it defensive? We're just making mistakes. Also, if you're new to this series, and me as a channel, as a person, um, I'm not good at this game, just so you're aware. I'm definitely not good at this game. That's probably a better way to put it. Rainer in the middle. Rainer, yeah, we'll have Rainer in the middle for the moment. Witzel can play as that halfback. He's actually really good as a halfback. Guerrero's on a 7.9. And then Mooney is on a 6.5 on the opposite side. So we need to make sure that everything goes down our left. Because Mooney is just not doing anything. Kaderbeck with the ball for Hoffenheim. He's been tackled by Guerrero. That's probably going to put him up to an 8. It's Witzel to Brandt. It has put him up to an 8. I can see down the bottom there. Guerrero's going to play a long ball forward. Eventually does. Erling Haaland gets a bit of space. He's going to run towards goal. No, he doesn't. He's gone for a long range shot. He's gone for a long range effort. What are you doing, Erling? All right, Witzel's coming off because he's not playing well. Thomas Delaney's going to come on. Munia is going to come off for Ethan Laird. Yep, Ethan Laird is making his Borussia Dortmund debut. How I understand how we're losing this game because we're not having chances. But the fact that we're not having chances is just irritating me. Rudy gets it back. Edge of the penalty area for Hoffenheim. They've still got this ball. Are we going to stick a foot in, please? Anybody? Somebody stick a foot in. We're just slowly pushing them back. Now Rudy gets it on the right. Smith Rowe steals it away, who I think has had an absolutely cracking debut. Stefan finds Ethan Laird. The two Manchester, former Manchester players, I guess, for Stefan. Laird keeps going down the right-hand side. He's cutting inside now. Ethan Laird's continuing forward. Gio Reyna across Julian Brandt. Now Smith Rowe. There's only two players in the middle. 
Brandt is hopefully joining them. Guerrero now with some space. Tries to get past his man. Can he get across away? Plays it to Brandt instead. What are we doing here? Delaney. We're going backwards, aren't we? Brandt. Guerrero has all the space. What are we doing? This is such an obscure highlight. Haaland makes some space for himself. And Erling Haaland, the one-man team, does the job. Puts the ball into the bottom corner. It's 1-1. That was such a surreal highlight because we were going backwards. We were going off to the left. We didn't seem to want to go forward until ha Erling Haaland got the ball and went, you know what, I'm just going to score a goal now if that's okay with you. And this is what he does. Just left foot, blasts it underneath the keeper. It's 1-1. Guerrero with a corner just two minutes after the goal. Sancho was there. He's hit the bar this time as well. Haaland's collected it. Crosses it in towards Smith Rowe. It's cleared. It's taken a deflection as well, but nothing really came of it. We need to get this goal. We need to get ourselves a winner. We really do. Guerrero's on an 8.4. What is Guerrero doing? He's knackered, but he's having an absolutely amazing game. Final sub then. We are going to take off Smith Rowe. He's had a good game. We're going to bring on Timothy Weyer. Going to make sure that we play all of our new signings or as many as we can. Unfortunately, Michael Oberfemi can't come off the bench today. Full time then. It's a 1-1 draw against Hoffenheim and they were the better side. They were, they were arguably the better side. They had a better XG at literally double our XG. We had a lot of shots. 17, 10 of them on target. Just most of them were rubbish. So, the opening game of the season then, not exactly the most inspiring, is it? It's a 1-1 draw against Hoffenheim. Away from home. I'm trying to clutch at all of the straws here. We're away from home. Top of the table, Leipzig, Bayern Munich, Borussia Mönchengladbach, Frankfurt and Köln all picking up three points. We're starting on the back foot then. Next episode then, we're going to be playing Bayern Munich. I know we do have to play them in the league before we get... You know what? We might do that. We might do a double Bayern Munich episode. We might do the league game, which is going to be tough. I imagine we're probably not going to win that one. And then also the DFL Super Cup that I don't think we really care about. The the, uh, the transfer window will be closing between the Armenia Bielefeld game and the Bayern Munich Super Cup match. So uh, yeah, next episode, transfer window will close. Usually... I will go a little bit further. So after that, we're probably going to head off into sort of November time, Wolfsburg, Mines, maybe something around, basically, somewhere in November will be episode three. Before we get there, we've got to do episode two, though. Thank you very much for watching episode one of my Borussia Dortmund save. Now, I'm fully aware that there's going to be people out there thinking I'm not taking this seriously. And you're kind of right. It's a computer game. You shouldn't take them too seriously. But also... It's how I like to play them. I don't see the point in playing it to win everything. To, it's easy to win everything. You just buy the best players. I want to make the best players. I want to make players who aren't the best players become the best players. Things like that. So that's kind of, that's how I'm doing it. That's the plan with this Borussia Dortmund save. Thank you very much for watching this episode. If you did enjoy, do please remember to leave a like. If you are new here and you want to see more of the Borussia Dortmund save, hit the subscribe button, ding the bell as well so you get notified when the next video is released. And I'll see you in episode two, where we'll play Bayern Munich twice and probably lose both of them.